Hey, it's John with Wayland Speed. Uh, today I'm gonna go over like pretty much everything involved with the launch control and setup. <clears throat> um, the cool thing with our system is uh, we send it pre-configured, but it can be, it's all unlocked. So you can go in there and change the settings. Um, like if you wanna change your engine speed or how aggressive it is or how it activates. Uh, so we're going to kind of go over the process. Um, obviously, you would probably already have our launch control device and had it plugged in and wired up. We're not really going to go over that today. Um, but the cable, you know, that you use is the supplied cable, the same cable that you would get for uh, the PV3. <coughs> um, you have to download the Dynajet software to do this. So you go to Dynajet.com, support downloads the power core soft load or power core software download is semi hidden i guess so you click on that that would download it i don't really need to download it and then basically you would open up this screen you click on the c3 tuning software that would essentially bring you in to this all we need to do is plug this into the computer It doesn't even need, like the machine doesn't need to be powered on. It, we power the launch control device through the USB cord. So um, you would go to configure features, feature enables and input selections, launch control. So this is my current launch control setting for my RR. So. <coughs> These would normally come configured for 2200 or 2700 uh, RPM, and we would normally have a delay configured. So when you push the button, the launch control button, which we will go over that, it will start the timer, so you, it counts down from three. So you'd have three seconds before it would actually activate. This just makes sure like people don't accidentally push the button. You know, like when you push the button and hold it, you're, trying to engage launch control. You can go in this and configure this to, to be no. So when you push the button, it instantly goes into like the launch control setting. The other part of it is <clears throat> if you buy the launch control from us, we will load our firmware into it, which has a different cut setting and ignition retard than what you could buy from other people, I guess. So, you know, we were kind of part of getting this thing going for DinoJet. Um, so, like, we have two things going on. We have the launch control setting off a of switch, and then we also, when we push the button, it'll go from position one to position two. So when we push the button, it'll go from position one to map position two. That gives us our own ignition retard um, that's separate from the computer. So the device will actually do the ignition retard for us. So we can pull up to 40 degrees of timing. It depends on the setup, but you know, um, and this is pulling 35 degrees from what the ECU's base is. So we do have settings that work good, pre-configured that we give you. Um, that'll help it build boost. Like we do offer the ME package where we help you. Like if you have camshafts or bigger turbos or other things like that, I can help you set this up remotely for you to change your engine speed and get the ignition retard. So we build the most boost. I'm gonna kind of go over the process of it. There are some differences and variances based on your machine that could cause some other issues to happen Mostly just like annoyance more than anything. So like early 2018 models that haven't been updated from the dealership, when you push the launch control button and come up to engine speed, say 2200 even, uh, the ECU tells the car that you're slipping the belt, go into low gear. That is resolved by pushing the override button at the same time. So like in my specific setup, I have override and launch control right next to each other. 
But in the 2020 RRs and some of the later um, flashes from Can-Am, that those got less sensitive. So um, like my 2020, for example, I don't need to hold the override at 2700 RPM and I can sit on the two-step for a while and it won't give me that belt slip code. So it, we will have a switch that replaces the override button. The hard thing is, is not everybody will need it. So if you, you know, do notice that your car goes into like a low gear mode, um, you can buy the switch off us. Or if you know that you have an early, you know, the likelihood if you have a 2018 model and it hasn't been updated by Can-Am, you might have, you have a higher chance of having issues with that, with the launch control. So you might as well just buy the switch right off the get. Um, I'm gonna start my car up and kind of go over the process, like, you know, how I launch it at this current engine speed and how it all works. Um, you don't need to use the brake pedal. You could technically put this on anybody's tunes um, and configure your launch control yourself or buy it pre-configured from us. This is just like an external device that doesn't mess with the factory ECU, you know, really at all. Um, we have updated all of our tunes to make the misfires because it technically is misfiring when we do this. We are purposely cutting cylinders and introducing a misfire to do the things we want to do for launch control. So I'm going to start the car, get it warm, and then I'll just go over the process in the car. Record. Mm -hmm. So, if you test this in your garage, <laughs> please make sure that your seatbelt is buckled because it will, if the seatbelt's not buckled, you have like torque limits and stuff that come into play. So, I just buckled the seatbelt. I'm in park for this. I'm just gonna kind of like show what's going on. When I push the button, you can see it go from map one to map two. <clears throat> so when it's in map two, you can see it's starting to cut. So the idea is to like basically floor it. So. So. You know, I'll, I'll do a demonstration. So, you know, I'm not holding a brake or anything. So you just push the button. And basically it. The, <clears throat> so like, you obviously want the, you know, when you set up launch control, you preferably don't want the belt engaging on, you know, the clutch engaging the belt on the two-step. Which, you know, like your engagement when you're testing it in your garage, when you're just rolling right up to the engine speed, you know, you think it's 2700, but when you're on the two-step, because like engine speed's a little bit more violently moving around, it might start to engage the belt um, at 2600 or something like that. So you might have to play with the setting a little bit. Um, but in general, like our two kits that we sell work pretty dang good uh, for the pink spring or the KWI all blue spring. The 2200 RPM engagement or the 26, 2700 RPM engagement. So this current setup is on a, a KWI clutch with the pink spring. And uh, I, I put mine right up to the point where it was tapping the, the belt. So I'm like kind of on the edge of it, but um, they're, they're normally sent out at 2700. So there's just that little 100 RPM gap there. But yeah, I mean, like if I wanted to like just, I'll just go over this real quick. So if I want to change this to 2500, you would send this to the device. Send. I, I don't know, I send it a couple times just to make sure it's sent in there.
RPMs on the dash. It starts cutting right at 2,500 now. So I've lowered that down. So if you did want to make a change, if you did want to make a change to how the ignition retard works, because now we're at 2,500, you can change the axis to be a little bit different on the resolution. So say we're at 2,500 now, so you want to move these values down to the 2,500 area. So now we're actually getting into some ignition retard when we get to that. Send it. get a little more violent with the ignition retard so if you don't want a very aggressive like fireball shooting stuff I mean that's your preference you don't need to put as much ignition retard but if you don't put that much ignition retard you're not gonna build that much boost you still may be able to build like one or two pounds of boost um, if you want like the six seven psi it needs to do the pops and bangs to get it to do that but basically um, I just wanted to kind of go over this with people that want to do the changes themselves. Um, people that originally bought it for the blue spring and want to go to the pink spring. Um, we can save these files and send them to you with the, uh, with the correct changes. So you just have to email in or call in and request that and we can do that for you. But just a simple short vid, try to make it short and they always end up long of how the operation works. Thank you.